Hello, this is Avraham Bronstein for Uri Tzedek. As the Israelites raced towards the Reed Sea with the Egyptians in hot pursuit, in the dramatic moments at the beginning of this week's Torah portion, it would be hard to imagine any groups that could possibly be more dissimilar, any two groups with any less in common. After all, the Midrashic tradition has it that despite their centuries in Egypt, the Israelites maintained a wholly distinctive culture. They retained their Israelite names, their language, even their style of dress. We know that the Israelites maintained a distinctive theology with a radically un-Egyptian conception of God of the universe and their place in the cosmos. And yet the Midrash teaches us the angels themselves were confused as to the ultimate difference between the Israelites and the Egyptians. The Midrash relates that as God prepared to split the sea, the angels questioned why one group was to be saved and the other drowned. Halalu of the Avodazara, the Halalu of the Avodazara, they exclaim. They're both the same. They're both idol worshippers. This past week, many of us were dismayed as we read the New York Times account of the unsafe and oppressive working conditions at Foxconn's massive manufacturing facilities in China, facilities where 40% of the Western world's electronic, consumer electronics are produced, facilities where 70-hour work weeks are common, facilities where workplace injuries and even fatalities are unfortunately commonplace. Towards the end of the article, an Apple executive was quoted as saying, you can either manufacture in comfortable, worker-friendly factories, or you can reinvent the product every year and make it better and faster and cheaper, which requires factories that seem harsh by American standards. How many Apple consumers reflected on those words after reading them on their Foxconn-produced iPads? The word Mitzrayim, Egypt, literally means straits or narrow places. Tradition has it that the letter Mem at the beginning of the word is open, while the letter Mem at the end of the word is closed, to demonstrate how people would enter Egypt freely, and then once there, find themselves trapped, ensnared, unable to leave. The truth is that the Egyptians, ultimately, were just as trapped as the Israelites. The Egyptian economy, indeed the Egyptian social order, their entire way of life, depended on slave labor. Bound to such a system, the Egyptians were forced to desperately chase after the Israelites, even after suffering through the ten plagues. Losing their labor force meant the end of their society, the end of their way of life, the end of everything they knew and were able to depend on. There was simply no alternative, no matter how self-defeating they knew, they must have known, that their efforts ultimately were going to be. We find ourselves trapped as well. We often cannot afford to buy the more expensive, natively produced goods, yet we also recall at conditions in factories such as Foxconn's, where more cost-efficient products are made. On the other hand, if we as a society stopped buying those goods, we know that our own society, our own economy, our own way of life would grind to a halt, possibly destroying our own jobs and incomes, along with the jobs and incomes of those who work in those factories. In 1999, the New York Times published an op-ed by Nicholas Kristof about his experiences among Cambodian families who survive in the toxic garbage dumps of Phnom Penh in Cambodia. People, families, children looking for pieces of plastic and metal to sell to recyclers for pennies per pound. These families, he writes, dream of their children growing up to work in sweatshops where the wages are relatively higher, where the conditions are relatively safer, where the entire way of life is relatively more stable. Many commentators describe the slave mentality that the Israelites carried with them out of Egypt through the wilderness. True, those Israelites may have thought, life in Egypt was difficult, even oppressive. But at least we knew what to expect. And besides, it was better than being alone in the desert with nothing, where nothing is guaranteed. Perhaps this is what the angels meant, looking down at the drama unfolding before them at the Reed Sea. Both the Egyptians and the Israelites were enslaved. 
bound to opposite sides of the same coin. Even as that system, that coin, turned out to be so destructive, so oppressive to so many of them. Naturally, we identify with the Israelites. The rabbis of the Midrash challenge us to take the bird's eye view, the angel's eye view. This Shabbat, let's consider the ways in which we are trapped, in which we are bound by ties that violate our own sense of fairness and morality. Let's consider the ways in which we're tied to people as different from us as we can possibly imagine, as different as an Israelite would have been to an Egyptian. As we celebrate this week with the Israelites, let us continue to hope for and act towards a world that is truly free and redeemed. Shabbat Shalom.